Hello everyone, I'm Ian from Creative Visuals and today I just have a quick tutorial for you on how to edit time lapses on your iPhone or your iPad using LumaFusion. So I just started using this app the other day and I've really been playing around with it and just trying to figure out what it is capable of. Now I'm going to be doing this time lapse starting from photos that I took on my Sony a6500 and then transferred straight to my iPad using the Play Memories app. And I'm gonna show you right here, this is how it turned out for me. I did my best to add as much motion blur as possible, but if you guys have any better techniques on how to do this on mobiles to recreate something like frame blending in other softwares, please let me know as it would be very much appreciated and I would love to add it to this tutorial. But to get started here, the one thing you're going to wanna to do is start by changing some settings if you're going to be doing this from photos. Now the techniques that I'm showing you can be applied to both photos and videos. For videos it's easier because you just have to speed up the video and then use these techniques. For photos you're going to want to start from here but I will add a timestamp for if you just are doing it from a video. So all you're going to want to do is speed up the video and then go to the timestamp on the screen now. But for photos here's how you're going to want to start. You're going to want to click this little settings icon and go to global settings. You're then going to want to go to photo here and just bring this all the way down to 0.01 just so that when you add the photos into the timeline they aren't lasting so long that you can tell that it's an actual well photos you you want it to look like a video so you're going to want the photos to be going very fast i set it to 0.01 but 0.02 0.03 you can get the kind of look you want i'm just doing the fastest as it's just a night star time lapse and there's a lot of time coming through so I'm gonna, once you've done that, you can go in here to your photos. I'm just gonna delete the original video so I can start from scratch. But in photos, I chose moments just because it has the entire album where I uploaded the photos from my camera. And in here, you can see this is just filled with only the photos from the time lapse. Now what you're gonna wanna do is click this little check in the bottom left and then click the double check that appears once you've clicked it and it will select all the photos for you. Now what you're going to want to do is just click and hold and then drag your finger down and put it onto the timeline. There may be a bit of a delay just because there's probably quite a few photos if you're doing a time lapse. And from here, you have all of your photos straight on the timeline. And if you play it through, it might be a bit laggy just because, like I said, there's a lot of photos. But you will have your time lapse in there. And what you can do is zoom out a bit. And if you look in the bottom, you can kind of see times when the exposure has changed a bit. So if you do want, you can just go in and delete those frames where it's gonna flicker. As you can see there, there's a flicker. So you could just go in and delete that frame if you really want to. I'm not going to just for the sake of time, but if you do wanna really perfect this, you can go in and change it. I just forgot to set my ISO to a certain value, so it was changing as the uh, t brightness outside changes a bit overnight and this went all, literally all night so I didn't want to have to be letting the let recorrecting things afterwards throughout the video so I just left the auto ISO on and that's why there's some flickers depending on where it used the auto exposure but anyways once you have all of your photos in the timeline all you're gonna want to do is render this out so you are just gonna want to click share movie put it into your photos choose the highest resolution that you're, if I would recommend 4K, uh, use 24 frames per second that is what I'm gonna do at least, and then make sure that your video quality is on ultra. Make sure it is the highest, because every time you're rendering something, you're gonna lose quality, and since I have not found a way to nest things within LumaFusion, I would just recommend using the highest quality. And from here, for, if it's time-lapse, you probably don't need audio, so you can speed things up by doing video only, and that's pretty much everything. You can choose MOV or MP4. And from here, you're just gonna wanna click render. So I'm gonna do that now, and then we'll jump right back in once it is finished. Okay, so now it has rendered. It is in my photo. So if we go in here, you can see there is the video. So now what I'm going to do is just go back and just make it so that everything is gone here so that we have a fresh timeline once again as we won't need the original photos again. Now we can just drag that video that we just exported back onto our timeline. And if we play it back now, you can see that it is much more smooth and it looks a lot better now. So now what we can do is just go in and do some color correction, color grading, whatever you wanna do. So I'm just gonna do that now. I'm gonna uh, put a, 
quick little uh, look on it. So I like the cool it because it adds some blue to it. Bump up the contrast just a tiny bit, tiny bit of saturation and vibrance and everything else is looking pretty good here. So I think that's all that I'm going to do for it right now, but this is the time that you can do that so that it will be affected and make your video look better. So as you can see, that looks pretty cool. Looks like the night sky. There is a bit of banding, but it's not too much I can do about that at this point. I did try to put these into Lightroom first as they were shot raw, but it did not work too well. So sadly, I just had to do it this way. So a bit of banding is better than not being able to do the time lapse. Now moving on, this is the step that I use to get motion blur. So since there is no frame blending option, what I do is zoom in all the way right to the start of the clip. And all I do is press clone. Now this is gonna put one behind it. So what you can do is just drag it up and put it on top of your other clip. And from here you can press clone once again, zoom out again, and then you just wanna put them all on top of each other and move them straight so that they are in line. Zoom all the way back in and just move these back one frame for this one and two frames for this one. And from here, you're just gonna wanna pull this back so that they are all in line and then zoom back out again so that you don't have to scroll so painfully long. Move all the way to the end and just crop them back so that they are all in line like so. And now from here, it's not doing too much. So what you wanna do is press on the second one, go to edit and just go back in here to your motion, go all the way down to the bottom where it says blending and just bring this down to about 50% or so. Your mileage may vary, but I'm just gonna keep mine at around 50. And then for the same for the top one, go to edit, blending, and bring it down to 50. Now I would do this a few more times, but you can only have three video layers. So what you could do is keep exporting this and then putting another two layers on top, but that is going to get quite tedious after a while. So I'm just sticking with three for the sake of time. And like I said, you lose quality every time you re-render it. So you don't really wanna do that too many times. But as you can see, that does add a bit of blur to things to make it look a bit better. And in my opinion, that is the best way that you can do this on LumaFusion so far. Like I said, if you guys have better ways, please let me know. But that's how I do it. And from here, I will just render this out and show you guys the finished product. Now, I did want to mention that uh, if you are doing this with video, this is where you would have skipped to. So all you have to do is just make them on top, go on top of each other, move them a few frames over and then bring down the opacity. So you get a bit of blur on everything. That's how you do it. You just don't have to have all those steps at the front with the photos as you're already in a video. You just speed it up and then use this technique. So like I said, I'm going to render it out now and show you guys the finished result once again. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll to the end of my timeline here, go into my moments, and choose the video that we just exported, which is right here. Drag it into the timeline, and here is our finished result. So as you can see, there is a bit more motion blur, the stars have a bit more separation, and it just looks more like a time lapse. They look almost like they're moving just because they're kind of separated, and this will work for pretty much any static time lapse you're doing, as it will add some motion blur like that. And pretty much, like I said, that's as, that's as the best way that I have found so far to do motion blur within LumaFusion. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like, sharing it, leaving a comment down below, or even subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you get notified when I upload on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. There will be more mobile tutorials to come as like I said in my last video, my MacBook Pro is being fixed. So I'm on my phone and my iPad for about a week. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.